the link between the fashion world and that of the arts, was quite strong at the beginning of the 20th century, especially thanks to couturiers, who also were avid art collectors central in the cultural life of Paris. Jacques Doucet is surely one of the most famous designers, who not only collected art, but also supported artists and architects in their activity, asking them to shape the spaces in which he lived and worked. Doucet was born in Paris in 1853. His family owned a very profitable lingerie and linens business, Doucet Lingerie. Raised in a refined and rich environment, from a very young age, Doucet began collecting 18th century furniture, paintings and sculptures. In 1871, he opened his fashion house, and in his creations can be seen a heavy influence from the style of the objects he collected. His penchant for this opulent era made him the go-to designers for the divas of the time, as Cécile Sorel, Réjean, and Sarah Bernhardt, for whom he created outfits that were both refined and recognizable, enriched with embroideries, frills, ruches, and velan. His style was too grand for the modern look in vogue in the 1920, so his popularity faded in that period. However, he kept working, and in 1927 he asked Cubist artists and sculptors to decorate his studio house in Rue Saint-James, Nuit-sur-Seine. Its name was Hotel Particulier, it was designed by the architect Paul Rouault and included works and projects by Lorenz, Charki, Lipschitz, and Marcusis. His first collecting interests focused on French 18th-century art, and after 1912 on French modern and contemporary art. In his collecting practice, Doucet considered the fine and applied arts of equal importance and championed their integration, an attitude reflected in his display practices. In addition Doucet, collected African and Asian art. In 1875, Doucet joined the family couture business, established in Paris by his grandfather Antoine Doucet in 1817, and continued by his father Édouard Doucet and mother Mathilde, née Gonard. Under Jacques Doucet's leadership, Maison Doucet grew in scale and importance to become one of the most important fashion houses of its time. Doucet further exerted influence on the fashion industry by employing and mentoring the next generation of influential designers, among them Paul Poiret and Madeleine Vianney. In 1924, Maison Doucet merged with competitor Maison Duelit. The new venture closed in 1932. Beginning in the 1870s, Doucet assembled one of the most extensive collections of French 18th-century fine and decorative arts, which in June 1912 he sold on block at a public auction held at Gallery Georges Petit. A social event of the year, the sale reached record prices and marked a dramatic shift in Doucet's collecting interests. By this time he had already begun buying Impressionist and Post-Impressionist art, and during World War I. His tastes became more radical, focusing on avant-garde artists. Doucet met Pablo Picasso around 1915 or 1916, and made his initial purchases of the artist's work soon after. By the time of his death in 1929, Doucet owned several paintings and works on paper by Picasso. Parallel to his modern art collection, Doucet assembled two libraries, both of which he donated to the University of Paris. 
the scholarly library of art and archaeology, Bibliothèque d'art et d'archaeologie, specialized in materials related to history of art and archaeology, and also encompassed drawings and prints, including examples by Georges Braque, Albert Gleises, and Picasso. Doucet employed writers and poets as librarians and advisors to assemble the Library of Literature, Bibliothèque Littéraire, a collection of special editions and manuscripts of the modern literary movement, beginning with the mid-19th century. Between 1920 and 1924, Doucet employed for this task the poets André Breton, Pierre Reverdy, and Louis Aragon. Breton became especially instrumental in Doucet's art purchases, advising him to buy Henri Rousseau's The Snake Charmer, 1907, Musée d'Ausset, Paris, obtained from Robert Delaunay in 1922, and Picasso's Les Demoiselles d'Avignon, 1907, Museum of Modern Art New York, acquired from the artist in 1924. Among the Cubist works in the Doucet collection were Picasso's Man with a Guitar, 1912, Philadelphia Museum of Art, and George's Brock Still Life with Glass, Dice, Newspaper and Playing Card, 1913, Art Institute of Chicago. Other artists represented in the collection were Constantin Brancusi, Giorgio de Chirico, André Derain, Marcel Duchamp, Matisse, Joan Miro, and Amadeo Modiani. The final home of Doucet's modern and non-Western art collection was the St. James Studio, a suite of three rooms reached by a grand staircase that Doucet built as an annex to his wife's house at 33 Rue St. James in Neuilly-sur-Seine. Designed by the architect Paul Rouard and designer Pierre-Emile Legrain, the private gallery was a showcase of art deco design, decorated and furnished with works commissioned from Rose Adler, Marcel Cord, Joseph Charqui, Eileen Green, Lalique, Legrain, Jacques Lipschitz, Jean Lursat, Louis Marcusis, and others. Following Doucet's death, the collection passed on to his widow, Jean Doucet, née Roger, and his sister Marie de Brugeld, née Doucet, both of whom gradually dispersed the collection through private and public sales and donations to French museums. Jean Doucet sold several works by Picasso and Braque through the dealer Jacques Seligman. A portion of Doucet's collection is now housed at the Musée Angleden Collection Jacques Doucet in Avignon, established by Doucet's descendants. Turn-of-the-century fashions were characterized by exuberant surface decoration, where the materials, techniques, and styling of different decorative elements showed off one's prosperity. Indeed, Doucet indulged heavily in such excess of beautification. One of the characteristic traits of the Doucet aesthetic is the use of fluid, unstructured fabrics such as lace, tulle, silk, fur, and satin. From the turn of the century, with the body skimming directoire style and the taste for tea gowns, Maison Doucet's expertise with fabrics put the couture house at the height of fashion. Doucet dresses were just a bit softer in their drape, delicate in their surfaces and the vision of beauty fit in with the more sensitive side of the time. That Doucet's clients were daughters of great society matrons, wives of executives in the fashion retail industry, and popular actresses, confirms that the ultra-femininity of the Maison's designs were fashion-forward and distinct from the stiffer prestige image of the House of Worth. Is it any wonder then that both Edith Wharton and Marcel Proust conjured up characters, 
their answer to the siren call of Doucet frocks? High society dressing was very much a public consideration, a performance of wealth, class belonging and taste in the age of crass overnight millionaires and taller princesses. In the highly codified world of social elites, elaborate surface decoration gave expression to the complexity and power of social wealth, presenting ornate femininity as an index of masculine financial prowess in the new business order. The Maison Doucet sensibilities dovetail with the 18th century revival fashion trend, to which he contributed and executed at the highest level, informed by his own art collecting and connoisseurship. The sinuous lines of a peach embroidered ball gown in the Art Nouveau style have their clear precedent and inspiration in the 18th century meandering lines of Rococo design, found particularly in textiles. Of all the dress styles in a lady's wardrobe, it was the tea gown, or at home gown, that most embodied and fulfilled the sensual femininity of the Doucet aesthetic. Due to its light and clingy materials, that skimmed a woman's uncorseted body, it had a naturally suggestive quality to it. The abundance of airy lace over fluid, unstructured silk of a 1907 tea gown conveys the romantic and delicate aesthetic of the, the early century under the lofty eye of Doucet. The tea gown's softness underscores the traditional relationship between femininity and the private sphere, while also promoting modern modes of dressing for comfort. The secret to the successful Doucet aesthetic seems to lie in the unabashed sensuality of the clothes, no matter what the occasion.